Hello everybody and welcome back to our channel. I'm Kelly with Add It With Me and today we are going to be taking this gorgeous photo from raw to ready. We're also going to be discussing confidence as a shooter. So grab a cup of coffee, take a big breath, and let's roll those credits. Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody. How are you today? I hope your day is going wonderful. I hope that your time is expanding to meet what you need to get done today. And I hope that you are ready to have a little fun, dig into your creator heart and add it with me. We're gonna be working on this image today. This is a lovely couple that I was lucky enough to document a love story session for them. And this was legit straight out of camera. The sky was ridiculous. We kept stopping to take self like portraits of the sky during the whole session. Um, and it was just such a fun thing to shoot. So while I'm processing that today, we're going to be chatting about how I do it. We're also going to be talking about confidence as a shooter. So before I start our topic for the day, I'm going to kind of just basically go into what I'll be doing with the image and then we'll get to chatting. So I'd like to process this image um, using one of my own already created presets. Like I said, I am a huge believer in creating your own stuff. I understand as you're a new photographer, maybe um, that it, it might be easier to rely on other people, um, and their expertise. But what happens when you do that is you don't, you don't give yourself the ability to, to create confidence in your editing and in your shooting. Um, so when you start really learning how these tools work for you and you start really learning how, um, presets work and how you can edit your own things by hand in Lightroom and in Photoshop, your confidence is going to soar. So I'm going to start um, with one that I made and I'm going to show you just very quickly how to make your own preset if you're not really sure how to do that in Lightroom. Now I'm working in Lightroom CC, which is the Creative Cloud version. So yours may look slightly different than mine and that's okay. Um, but when you open up your preset right down here, when you open up your preset folder, um, you're going to see, I obviously have all of these. Any that you see, Kelly's Workflow or KGP, those are all the ones I've created to go with my areas. Now, I do have some. Um, that was maybe a couple years ago. I downloaded a bunch of them and was frustrated because I kept trying to make them work on my images and they just weren't. They weren't working. Um, then I found this group called the Wandering Tribe. Um, shout out to Stephanie. She's awesome. And Kevin. But... Um, one of my girlfriends, Carrie, she turned me on to that and I have not looked back. Now, I will tell you, they don't work for everything and I'm having to make my own. So like on this, there's a lot of complex coloring. Um, I want it to be very true to life. So I went in here and I actually created my own um, preset for this. And I'm gonna, I call it Cotton Candy Skies. It's not exactly where I want to be, um, obviously, there's a, quite a few things that are wrong with this, but I have to go in and lighten those up. So I'm going to kind of show you, um, once I played with my settings here, I'm going to show you what it looks like right here. You can look down our adjustment panel all the way down. And let's say that you've played with an image to get it where you want it. You're going to go to presets and this menu will pop up. You're going to click on these three buttons right here, and you're simply going to click create preset. And what that's going to do is it's going to pull up a dialog box. You're going to name your preset. I'm just going to name this one, edit with me, one beach skies. I already have it saved, so I'll just go in and delete that in a minute. But just to show you, you're going to choose where you want to have it saved. You have an option of creating your own folders in here. Um, and like I have mine, Kelly's workflow, and then all these KGP are 
what I've created um, to go with my different sessions. So I'm just going to click Boho Beach Vibes. And then you can go down here and you can select what you want Lightroom to save and what you don't want them to save. So you can have them just save color, light, effects, detail. You can also have them save tools if you decide to do a linear gradient or a radial gradient, which I have both on that preset. So I'm going to make sure that that's selected. And then you just click save. And then when you go in here, you will easily be able to pull up right here, EWN number one, Beach Skies. And you can apply that to your images. So if you didn't know how to do your own presets, now you do, super easy, super fun. So let's get processing this specific image. We are going to um, work on lessening this dramatic effect a little bit. I don't like how hard and crazy it is here. So I'm gonna work on lessening that. I'm gonna come up and we always start at the bottom. If you've been working with me for any amount of time, you know that I always start at the bottom and do my mass changes. And then I go in and I mess with lighting. So I'm not gonna have to touch sharpening or noise reduction. I am gonna pull down my color noise reduction and I'm going to add in a little tiny bit of grain. I always go between three and seven, depending on my image. Um, now I have already had, remember I made this preset, so it's already set to my typical settings there. But what I don't appreciate is um, some of the lighting seems a little bit off from where I want it to be. The contrast is a little bit too contrasty. So I'm just gonna mess with those. While I mess with those, I want to um, dig into your heart and I want to start our, com our conversation on confidence with a quote. This is by Diane von Furstenberg, and it's in her book called The Woman I Wanted to Be. It's always resonated with me because it really dives into the heart of having, a com having confidence um, in anything you do. But I'm just going to read it for you. Confidence makes us beautiful, and it comes from accepting yourself. The moment you accept yourself, it makes everything better. I think a lot of our lack of confidence as shooters specifically is that we don't really know who we are as a shooter. Let me explain. We spend so much time comparing ourselves to what we think we should be, right? And especially when you first start out, you see all of these gorgeous images and these photographers who have started and worked and you wonder why you don't look like they're them. You wonder why you don't look like they do, why your images are grainy or why you're struggling to get a specific um, lighting scenario down and, and things like that. And I think it becomes from not accepting ourselves, who we are. It is so difficult to look that person in the face as a creator and say, I see you and I understand you and I accept you, right? It's, it's so difficult for us to do that to ourselves. And I, I don't know why that is. Um, I struggle with this too. So don't feel like it's only you, obviously. But when I first started, it was hard to have confidence. Um, I felt like I needed to be what was popular. I felt like I needed to do for my clients what they were seeing on Pinterest. And I think that's a very common pitfall. All I'm doing is just adding in a little bit of aqua to this um, to bring back the real color of the sea. So just to keep you up to date. But anyway, I felt like I had to provide um, what everyone else was providing. I felt like I had to copy the Pinterest ideas and, and provide that for my clients, right? And that is such a myth, guys. It's such a myth. I cannot tell you now that I have um, begun my journey. I cannot tell you how many clients bring me Pinterest boards. It, it's literally no one. <laughs> so it, it comes from me being confident about what I want to capture as an artist. Um, this one looks like it's ready to bring in Photoshop. So we're going to go do the rest of our work in Photoshop. But while we do that, um, it people are coming to me and trusting me for my vision, my abilities, my confidence as a shooter. Um, and that does take hard work, but it's, it's not, it's not a magic formula. You know, it, it's believing in what you love, marketing to those who you want to shoot for 
And really everything that you do in your business should be pointed towards what you love and what you want to create. The people will come. If you're doing a good job of explaining yourself and putting yourself out there, the clients who are going to be your people, they will come. Um, It's just a matter of having your message and deciding what that message is, right? Accepting yourself. I don't need to do beautiful studio imagery. That's not my thing. I don't need to create these gorgeous fine art model sessions. That's not my thing. My thing is a cute couple on the beach making out with a beautiful sky or a brand new baby as her family welcomes her home into their house and the chaos that ensues. Those are my things, right? But it took me a long time to really realize that. Okay, I'm going to stop the chat for just a second. I'm going to go through what we're doing. Um, I applied my universal prep, which if you're new here, you may not know that. It's just a little bit of portraiture and a sharpen and that's it. Um, So I am going to work a little bit in this, but honestly, it doesn't need a whole lot of stuff from us. Um, So I am going to come up here, get my healing brush. I'm noticing a little bit of things that are driving me crazy. Not a ton, but I'm just going to work on eliminating those. So if you don't know how to quickly change the size of your um, brush in Photoshop, you just use your bracket keys. And uh, the one on the left is smaller. The one on the right is bigger. And that's kind of how you can um, change your bracket keys. I'm sorry, not change your bracket keys, change your selector. So I'm actually fairly happy. I really want some of these natural bubbles in in the sea because that was the way that it was. And if you've been with me for any amount of time, you know that um, I like to, to, to take my images from what was there and just increase it by 25%, 30%. I don't want to change what actually happened. The things I will go in and I'll Photoshop are um, watermarks or people or um, if they have dirt on their shirt or something like that, I'll go and I'll remove that. But I will not come in here and just completely have surgery on the entire sky or anything like that. So that's just not my thing. Um, but anyway, I'm... Apply universal prep. I'm going to come in here and click my smart sharpen and I'm going to make my bracket slightly bigger. I'm going to apply that to just the couple only to give them a special little amount of pop. And actually I'm going to delete that because I don't like how sharp that was. Let's try that again. We're going to apply smart sharpen. And that's the thing guys, it's playing a lot of people. I feel like they get the same kind of um, paralyzation that you get with a blank page, right? Do you remember in school when you had to write an essay or a paper or something like that? The scariest part was just staring at that blank page. Well, as photographers, we do that literally every single day with an image. We get an image pulled up on our computer and it's literally a a blank page. Um, but what I think a lot of people get tripped up on is it's okay to play. It's okay to mess up. It's okay to delete and redo and all of those things. Um, so many people get so concerned. Sorry, I just saved it by control S. That's my um, shortcut. And we're going to bring it back into Lightroom. There's a few things I noticed I want to fix and then we will be done. But anyway, I digress. So, so many people are scared. They're terrified of that, um, of that blank page. And I think it causes them like severe anxiety. They don't know where to start. Give yourself a starting off point. I'm going to explain what we're doing real quickly here before we get back into that. I am going to add a little bit of drama to that sky with my sunburst from Sujata Setia. You're going to click on it, double click on the lock to be able to move it. It's quite intense. So I am going to change the size of it. And you notice this effect dragging it all around my screen. It only ever works where the natural sunlight hits. So you want to be really careful while, when you do that. Now I have two points of, um, where the sunlight's hitting here. I have how the sun bounced it into the clouds, but then I also have the actual true to life sunset there. So I have to make a decision which one causes more drama and increases the viewer, um, reaction more. So I actually like the way that the sun's playing in the clouds up there better. So I'm going to focus on that instead, which means I need to get rid of this little sun right here. So there's a really easy way to do that. You could, um, lasso it. I'll show you how to do that. We're going to bring the glow up where it would naturally fall anyway, push it up so that it's just glowing. Um, and I'm going to push okay to set that. 
and then it's just way too, way too strong of a reaction. So I'm going to pull my opacity way down so that it's just a nice glow. It's not overwhelming the sky. Um, that looks better. That's much better. Okay. So I want the, the sun to be there. I'm going to flatten the image here. Now we've got to take care of that, um, pesky second real sun. <laughs> So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to fix it. I'm going to do that by clicking on my clone and that's the easiest with horizons. You're just going to sample, um, the sky and the horizon so that everything is lined up together and you're just going to come in, select and get rid of that. So while I'm doing that, friends, I wanted to go back, give yourself a jumping off point. If you are looking at a blank image and you just don't know where to start, start with something simple, start with white balance or start with the sky, have a little workflow for yourself. When you're feeling like you're getting stuck, have a little workflow for yourself and start there on every single image. Then it just becomes routine and rote for you. And you're, before you know it, you're editing without even thinking about, oh my gosh, it's a blank image. Now we're going to add a little oomph to this by putting in a lens over overlay. Um, I'm not going to hack the ones I have. You, there are tons on Etsy and, and online. Um, but come in and choose one of your favorite lens overlays. I actually prefer, let's see. Um, I think I really like one with a little bit of flare. Where is that one? Let's see. I think I want to do this one. Mm, okay. Let's do that one. All right. So you're going to click place. And that is going to bring it into your image. Obviously that's not what we want it to look like. So I'm going to resize so that it's true to the vote, to the image. I'm going to put it up where I want my son to be normally. And I don't like that. It's going off to the left hand side right there. So I am going to flip it horizontally and I am going to drag it up to where the sun naturally falls and adjust it so that it works. So once I have it placed right where I want it, um, I am going to go here and change the blending mode again to screen. And that'll give me a little bit of an easier time placing it. I obviously want it where it looks natural. It looks like it's peeping through the clouds. I don't want it to be too obvious. So look up here where the highest part is, and then you can kind of see it's a little bit too big. We'll resize that. Double click to place. And then you're going to want to flatten it down. I think I want to add a little more excitement to this. So I'm going to go into my lens overlays one more time and I'm going to add an actual sun. Um, depending on the sunset, I don't do this often for my images, especially when delivering to clients. Um, because I want to be able to catch what I can in my camera, obviously. But when we're doing something fun like this and teaching, it's, it's always fun to add a little extra oomph. So I usually put them on the corner and coming into the frame because that's how you're normally going to um, capture your flare. Normally you bend it off of the edge of your lens, right? So whenever you're doing these suns, um, I like to, unless it's coming through trees, I like to have it coming right off the side of the frame. So slide that up and you're noticing there's a hail a halo around this um that is obviously quite a tell that you've added something in that wasn't there before so you want to go in and remove that you're going to click the eraser tool and then click on the um thing you just placed and you want to rasterize it which basically just means that you're wanting to make adjustments so let's erase that halo off gently here and I don't want to erase it too crazy I don't want to go wild because then you'll be able to see that you were messing with the haze um, so you want to just make sure that you're really touching the borders and making sure it's nice and nice and blended there so once you're happy with that uh, you can see the before and after once you're happy with that go ahead and flatten your image And I'm pretty sure this one's done. So save. We're going to go back into Lightroom. And the last thing I wanted to do um, was just make a little adjustment on my couple here. I feel like with that added sun flare, they're just slightly too warm for my taste. They look a little bit yellow. We don't want to turn them into Oompa Loompas. We want it to be as realistic as possible. So I'm going to mess with my brushes here. I'm going to encourage you, dear friends, um, to examine your 
place that you're at right now in your shooting, I want you to choose progress over perfection, especially when you're coming into something new. It's unrealistic to expect perfection right out the gate, even with making these YouTube videos, right? Every time I deliver, I'm like, oh, there are definite mistakes in these that I would like to fix. But I always want to strive for progress over perfection because if I'm growing and changing, then that makes all the difference in the world. Sorry, while I was chatting, I kind of flashed up the before and after for you. And I want to encourage you to have confidence, love what you're doing, and remember, you are loved, you are worthy, you are valuable, and the world needs your lens. Have a wonderful day. See you next time. Bye.